how to apply a webbing, traditional webbing, in this case it's a black and white or English or herringbone webbing as it's sometimes called. And this is a, a, a British made product that we have produced. Um, and if you're fitting webbing, you need a tack always with what's called an improved head. In this case, we are using a 16 mil or a 5 8 improved head for these tacks. Now, I'm using a 16 mil because I'm applying this to an old chair and I'm applying it underneath to a very robust frame. If I were doing it on perhaps a dining chair or something uh, with a lesser frame, I would go down to a half inch improved. But I would always use the tack with the improved head, the bigger head, so that it can gr grip down onto the webbing and hold it tightly. Now I'll take a few of these tacks from the box. When you're applying the webbing, don't put the webbing too near the edge of the frame because you'll see that even if you have a bottoming on you'll get a lump at the edge and you don't want that and you'll see that when the chair is upright so pull it just in in this case we've got a reasonable width of the frame so we've got plenty of room to pull it in now what we don't want to do is we don't want to apply the tacks in a line um, we want five tacks on here but if we put them in a line what's going to happen is we're going to split the grain because we're going to put the tacks then in the same grain and it's more likely to split it. So we're going to start with putting one tack in the middle of this webbing. I've turned it over by the way so it's double at the moment. The other thing to be sure of when you start is that the other end of your webbing is actually aiming where it, you want it to go because if you have it slightly crooked like that you could find that you'll get a slacking on one side when you straighten it up so keep it straight and then your next two tacks are the top of your W or the top of your N get in the habit of just feeling the top of your tacks to make sure they've sunk properly into the webbing I want this to go exactly where in the right place so that it's holding the webbing on the very edge hence being very precise now that's my three tacks which is the center of my M or W whichever you want to call it um, and now I need the bottom of my W here and it's just slightly higher than the middle tack either side and I just make sure they're home properly. Now at the other end, other side of my chair and it doesn't matter whether you start at the front or the back but you really want to have use your webbing strainer on a straight edge so if one of these edges are curved put that on first and then you can stretch against a nice straight edge now this is the webbing strainer of my preference and every upholster has their own preference but this is mine um, and it's got a groove on one side there and then it's got a chin shape piece at the top and the way to try and remember how to use this is to point the chin shape piece towards your chin point the groove towards the frame and then You've dropped your webbing onto the floor, you've got a roll hanging down onto the floor, or onto your bench, and then you pop a piece through the web strainer and catch it, I'll turn it over so that you can see, and catch it with the dowel at the back. So I'm actually trapping the webbing here in that groove between the groove of the web strainer and the frame. And that's very, very important because that's what's stopping it slipping. I do see some um, books, etc., that tell you to do it the other way up, and you're actually holding the tail of this webbing on the top here, like this, and that's the only thing that's stopping it slipping, which negates the use of a, a web strainer. So you can adjust how tight this is by just twisting the style one way or the other, and you may need to adjust it. 
I think I need to just bring it, tighten it up just a little bit so I'm not pressing down too far. I've got marks on my frame here where I want this to go and I'm pressing down, it's a cantilever action, so I'm pressing down quite firmly on that part. You can hear it tightening and I don't know if you can hear the dingy noise that that's making, and it's quite tight. And keep that tight. And this is where your magnetic hammer comes in because I need a third hand, so my tack is actually already on my hammer. Put my centre one in. Notice I'm putting the second tack in right on the very edge of the webbing. And the same with my third tack. Again, not too near the back so that I can fold my webbing away from the edge. Just feeling if they're at home properly. That could do with another hit. Now I've got the three tacks in that are holding it right across my webbing. If I put the centre one in and the two shorter ones, the ones that are shorter from the edge in, I wouldn't be keeping the edges of the webbing tight. And that's what's important. I can now release my web strainer and take it off. Now I'm just going to cut the webbing because it's quite secure, fold it over I'm just putting a little crease in the edge there and then I can put in the remaining two tacks one will go there and one there And there we have a really nice tight piece of webbing. I'll carry on putting the rest of the pieces in and when I go across the other way I will weave them uh, every other uh, one up one down. You'll notice that I've put these webbings in no more than their own width apart. These are two inch wide webs so therefore there is a gap between them that is no more than two inches so they are two inches apart. I could have done slightly less but we wouldn't recommend any more. When applying a piece of webbing to a frame that's slightly on the slant don't be fooled and think that you've got to place it on straight like that turning it over square because clearly the edge of the wood is at a slant so keep your webbing straight aiming at where it's meant to go but when you turn it over you can turn it over at the angle of the slant so the important thing is it's the webbing itself that is straight but the turnover is at an angle but do keep the webbing straight and heading exactly where you want it to end up when you put your tacks in